We played a friendly, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, we just had a behind closed door friendly versus Luton Town. We're going to get into that. Plus, there's some transfer news going around. Arsenal might be making 30 million for a player that we thought we couldn't even sell. Nuno Tavares could be headed to Nottingham Forest for 30 million euros. Sorry, pounds, not euros. Balogun could be making a move to another Premier League club. Yes, Tottenham Football Club have inquired about Balogun. Would you sell Balogun to Tottenham Football Club? Let me know. And also, with injuries to Timber, Kevin De Bruyne, all these other players, how does this stack up for the Premier League? Does Kevin De Bruyne's injury make Arsenal favourites to win the Premier League? Or does Timber's injury make Man City favourites continuously? Also, we're going to go into this game versus uh, Crystal Palace. What does the future hold for Gabriel Magales? What does the future hold for a lot of these players at this club at this moment in time? And guess what? Zinchenko and Reese Nelson are back from injury, ladies and gentlemen. All this plus more. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. And let me know, are we not favorites to win the Premier League? Here we go. Yes, 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 people. How's everyone doing today? Hopefully you guys are well. So let's get straight into it. First things first, the Luton Town game. So Arsenal played Luton Town in a behind-closed-door friendly where we won the game 3-0. Yes, we won the game 3-0. Uh, new signing, David Rea, played about 60 minutes in goal as he got his first opportunity to play in an Arsenal shirt in this behind-closed-door friendly versus Luton Town. Then we also had uh, great news that... Zinchenko is back from uh, back from injury. So is Rhys Nelson. So the two injured players are now back in the team and no longer having to worry. The goal scorers on the day, of course, Bakaya Saka doing what he does, Starboy things, also adding a goal to his tally. And Trossard got a brace in this game in the behind closed door friendly that we won 3-0. So those were the goal scorers. And that's what took place in this game that a lot of people didn't even know about. I found out about this thanks to Tom from the Guna Talk. He just did a video where he was talking about it himself. And of course, there's numerous articles about this. Arsenal have not released any information on the match yet, but this is the information that we have and I'm bringing it to you first. Uh, so let's get into some of the other stuff that we need to talk about because there's a lot of stuff going on around Arsenal. Hopefully you guys are well, but there's rumors floating about, about Balogun potentially going to Tottenham. Would you guys sell Balogun to Tottenham? Let me know. I personally would sell Balogun to Tottenham. I think if we were to get the 60 million valuation that we are asking for, that is realistically an amazing deal for us. But would Tottenham buy Balogun and would Tottenham pay the money that we'd be asking for for Balogun? Because I think the valuation that we are that we have Balogun at is a little bit too steep for Tottenham at this moment in time. And it just doesn't make sense why Tottenham would spend that type of money on, on Balogun especially when they could probably go get somebody who doesn't have ties to North London. Um, so at this moment in time, what what I team news ticks was the person who said, and he said, what's happened so far is Tottenham inquired and Arsenal are quoting a significantly higher uh, price, which is around 60 million. What is suspected uh, will happen here is Tottenham won't follow up and it will be the end of the situation. Tottenham will deny that they ever spoke to uh, spoke to Arsenal and 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 will deny that they ever had this conversation. But stranger things have happened. This deal is very unlikely to go through. But stranger things have happened. This is what uh, Team News Tick was talking about in his most recent uh, tweet regarding the Arsenal transfer news and potential uh, transfer for Balogun. Personally, for me, I I am not somebody who would keep either Eddie or Balogun. I would be open to the move of selling Balogun to Tottenham, but I understand that there's Arsenal fans out there that do not want to sell to Tottenham. So let me know, would you sell uh, Would you sell Balogun to Tottenham? If not, let me know. If yes, let me know. Um, there is also rumors around a certain Benjamin Pavard uh, at this moment in time. Uh, in... in uh, in news yesterday, we heard that Benjamin Pavard is linked to Arsenal reportedly because of the injury to uh, to Jurgen uh, Timber. Arsenal are now looking and have entered the race for Benjamin Pavard. So I asked you, Gunners, would you be open to the signing of Benjamin Pavard? I personally, 
I'm not a fan of Benjamin Pavard. I, I think he is uh, quite exposed quite often at Bayern Munich. And because of Bayern Munich's quality, they're able to get through games and not and not have to worry about him defensively week in, week out. And they might not have to worry about him uh, overall. I don't view him as a player who inverts much. I don't view him somebody... I view him more of a player who can play as a center back and a right back and similar to Ben White, but he's a lot slower and it will take him a lot while it will take him a little bit longer to transition into our team. I think we'd be better suited to go get an Ivan Fresneda or a natural right set right sided center back who could who could also play right back rather than the man himself, uh Benjamin Pavard. But you let me know what you guys think. With the injury of Yorian Timber, we are now finding ourselves in a situation where we need to look elsewhere and and try to add quality to this team. It has been reported that Inter have now also submitted a bid for Benjamin Pavard. So we might not even have to worry about him anymore because Inter have submitted a bid for him in around uh, the 35 to 40 million range. So that should get the deal done and he should be headed to uh, Inter Milan. But of course, we just have to talk about it because we are linked to the man. Um, now, Nottingham Forest, Nottingham Forest are interested in Nuno Tavares. Now, Nottingham Forest are heavily interested in Nuno Tavares. And this is beautiful, ladies and gentlemen. I had to hold myself back. How much do you think we can get for Nuno Tavares, ladies and gentlemen? In the comment section, comment right now before we get to the story. How much do you think Arsenal can get for Nuno Tavares? Because Nuno Tavares could be sold for 30 million pounds. Yes, reportedly, 30 million pound bid might be incoming. I don't believe it for one second. But the negotiations between Arsenal and Nottingham Forest over Nuno Tavares are ongoing. Both a loan and a permanent transfer are currently under discussion between both clubs. And the Gunners are happy for the player to move on. And they feel that he's in, in, they're, they're entitled to a profit on the £8 million fee that we paid Benfica for the player. This has been reported by Ryan, uh, Ryan Taylor Sport. And, of course, the Mirror have reported that Arsenal defender Nuno Tavares is a target uh, of £30 million bid from Nottingham Forest. If they give us £30 million, I am taking that money and I am running away. Give us that £30 million, we're out of here. I'm going straight to the bank. I'm, I'm putting that in. I'm slapping £10 million on top and I'm getting myself kudos. That's what I'm doing. But, hey, we got to wait and see what happens with the whole kudos situation because kudos by now, he could already be another – he could be on another team by now. Uh, for all we know, we go, but this right here, if this happens, whoo, this would be a great deal. It would be a great deal, ladies and gentlemen. Well, but have West Ham secured the deal of kudos? Have Chelsea secured the deal for kudos? Because if you guys don't know, the Michael Olise deal fell apart, and Chelsea right now are scrambling, trying to get themselves a replacement for Michael uh, Michael Olise, and understood that Chelsea are closing in on the 35.5 million pound deal for Kudos. We're going to have to wait and see what happens there. Reportedly, Kudos rejected Chelsea to join West Ham, so Arsenal can sign him two years later. Uh, these are obviously jokes. People are saying I don't see anything. I don't see anything legitimate yet for the Kudos stuff. What is this? Um, nothing, nothing legitimate. Where is it? What is this? Here we go. Three hours ago, West Ham are in talks with Kudos. Ajax, 50 million. Brighton failed to agree personal terms with Kudos. Um, Man City are still working on the Paqueta deal. Um, West Ham expect 85 million for, for Paqueta release clause, which is activated next summer. Um, we're going to have to wait and see. Could it be a situation where Arsenal gets him last minute? Could he end up at West Ham? Or could this be a situation where the player goes to Chelsea? We're just going to have to wait and see. This could end up in any single which way or form at this moment in time. But there is more. There's more outgoings at Arsenal, ladies and gentlemen. There's more outgoings. So I got to give you guys all the latest updates. My guy, friend of the show, Kia, has reported that Runnerson is close to sealing a deal on loan to um, Cardiff, yes, close to sealing a deal on loan to Cardiff, and talks are still ongoing for Nuno Tavaj uh, and and Nottingham Forest. Hopefully, we can get that thirty mil from them. Um, in other news, it looks like Balogun has had another situation where a club that was interested in him have moved on. First, we had Inter move on. Now we might have Monaco moving on away from Balogun as it's reported that Arsenal are close to selling, uh, are not closer to selling Balogun as 
they were at the start of the summer as Monaco's interest in DACA has uh, another blow to the saga. And although Fulham, Fulham might be now interested, we're, we're going to have to see. We are, Fulham, Fulham uh, saga relies on uh, records signing around 25 million from records in 2018. I don't know what's going to happen there, but at this moment in time, guys, the whole Balogun situation is annoying me. Um, he doesn't. He he clearly doesn't want to be uh, uh, dragged around too much. He wants to get his life, career sorted out and move on to his next club. Inter don't want to pay the money. These other clubs don't want to pay the money, but it now seems like he might be the alternative replacement for Mitrovic over at Fulham. They see him as their alternative to Mitrovic. Uh, Balogun is one of Fulham's key targets to replace Mitrovic. The Serbian left the club for Saudi Arabia in the summer. We're going to have to see if Fulham are serious in getting Balogun. Let's see if they're serious. If they're not serious, we're not going to be able to get this deal done. If they are serious, they're going to give us a good fee. That's just the reality of the situation. But yeah, there's a lot of injury concerns also. Because Mikar Arteta spoke about all the injuries and how he's a little concerned about all the injuries and everything that's going on in football because there's been uh, there's been multiple injuries this season so far. Let's be honest. There's been multiple injuries. With Timber's injury, there's been a lot of injuries uh, this season. You have uh, Tyrone Mink getting injured, Emi, uh, uh, Emi Brundia from Aston Villa getting injured. Um, you got Kevin De Bruyne getting injured, Courtois, Militao at the start of the season. They're basically saying that the concern for the welfare of the players, suggesting that they're better off not looking at the calendar over 36 months given uh, the number of games. Uh, so they need to look at how they're going to address this going forward because the calendar, the amount of games that are played are definitely negatively affecting teams. And this is where Mikel Arteta spoke about this. This was a qu direct quote from him and how he's how he's concerned over players, potential injuries and everything else going on around players. Um, now, with the injuries of Kevin De Bruyne, it might come to the benefit of Arsenal to the detriment of Man City as, of course, how important he is. But the Timber injury also negatively will affect us. And Timber is going to be out for a lot longer than, um, than the likes of, let's be honest, Timber is going to be out for at least six months where Kevin De Bruyne could be back before the beginning of the new year, 2024. So it is a situation where both both sides are quite sad, but what are you going to do? You got to just get over it and we got to move on. Injuries are a part of the game. And I think they can maybe change the scheduling so they don't play as often to try to reduce injuries going forward. And that's what Mikel Arteta is hinting at. Now, one more major factor uh, that we need to talk about. Martin Odegaard, the captain, seems to be closer to putting pen to paper for a new deal as Arsenal are in advance talks to get the deal done for Martin Odegaard next week. Initial discussions start uh, uh, taking place and extending Martin Norgard's contract will be number one priority of this year. This is great because we already have given Martin Odegaard, uh, Martin, uh, sorry, uh, Saliba, Gabriel, Mart uh, Gabriel Magalhães, uh, Gabriel Martinelli, Bakao Saka, Reese Nelson. We've given them all new contracts and now tying down the skipper to a new contract just adds to what we've been doing in this whole overhaul and how we run our business absolutely amazing i love it and let's just wait and see how things go from there now the other day uh yurian timber gave us yurian timber gave us a quick little uh message to the fans as he found out the extent to his injury and it is a quite sad uh moment because of course the guy has not even played uh more than two uh more than one half of a Premier League game before he got injured Gutted, Timber said, gutted to share my injury is a major, is is uh, serious, more than expected, especially after the warm welcome I've received. I want to repay uh, you on the pitch, which will not be possible for the fork, uh, forthcoming period. Thank you for making me feel at home. See you at the carpet. Love. You got to give it up to him, man. It's sad, but... Injuries are part of the game, and we just have to get on with it. Timber is going to be back soon. Hopefully, we can maybe sign a replacement. I don't want Benjamin Pavard. Um, the 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 news about the other guys not not going to happen. There's no there's no real le legs to the stuff with Fresnado or anything else at this moment in time. So we're going to have to wait and see what goes on there. But yeah, that's that. And final piece of news 
we might be finally done with Nicolas Pepe. As Arsenal are looking to terminate his contract and he could be making a move to Basiktas. That's pretty much it. So yeah, that's my update for today. Quick little update, 15 minutes long. Give you all you need to know about everything Arsenal. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you appreciate the content that I put out there for you guys. If you guys want to help out the channel, go check out my most recent video, Vibes from the Six. And you can also uh, like that video for me. And of course, I'm going to do a match preview for uh, the Crystal Palace game. Unfortunately, I can't get a Crystal Palace fan on for that game but I will be getting a video sent in from a Crystal Palace fan to play for you guys. I'll be doing that tomorrow, most likely at six o'clock. So stay tuned for that. And hopefully you guys enjoyed this stream. Hope I mean, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the live streams and let me know. Do you guys want me to do a call in show? And because I haven't been able to do one in a while, I'll maybe try to do one to next time for you guys. And yeah, I appreciate all the love. If you've gotten this far in the video, my question to you is what is your favorite cartoon? Just and put your favorite cartoon in the comment section so I know that you've watched up until this point in the video because you're an absolute legend and I appreciate all you guys. And make sure you smash that like button. Big up to all you guys and have a great day. Peace, people. Love for the love. Mm -hmm.